guys, how's it going? So it's finally time for another garden tour. In fact, we just filmed a separate garden tour at my parents' house so that we could give you two very nice long garden tours because I feel really bad for how long it's been. Uh, and we just, both of us had our gardens open for a garden tour, so it seemed like an appropriate time because everything's looking pretty tip top at the moment. Um, and you know that does not last very long in the garden. I mean, just give it a couple of days and I'll have a fresh crop of weeds um, growing. So anyway, it's just a really pretty time right now. I did want to start right up in the front entrance of our house because we just had something kind of sad happen about 20 minutes ago. We heard a really loud crash and saw birds flying away and this huge branch fell down out of this mulberry tree. Look at how big this branch is. Russell's capitalizing on it. Um, so it's rot is what's going on right here. I thought that maybe we had boar damage, but like the inside of this tree is just rotting out. Um, and this is when I start thinking about taking trees out because I don't mess around with stuff like this. And this is what was happening with our elm trees on the other side of the property that we had removed. Um, big branches, not quite this big, but they were pretty good size, were falling out during windstorms. And I don't want anybody to be parking their car under. I mean, think if like we were out here with Benjamin, what if he was out here playing underneath this tree and something like this happened? Um, so. We're going to have a professional. I'm calling a professional first thing in the morning. I'm going to have him come and help us remove this because this is a huge branch. Like, there's no way I can handle this. Um, so we're going to ask if he can, you know, handle that and then kind of assess the rest of the tree. Um, so we will be reporting back to you guys to let you know. I mean, it would be a huge shame to lose this tree because it's so huge, it's so old, and it's right in the entry of our property that it would leave a pretty good size hole. Um, so it's not something I want to have happen and I didn't plan on that branch falling out, but that's kind of some of the things that happen in your garden sometimes and you just have to kind of roll with it and be okay with it. Um, let's go right up here. I just want to give you a little progress update on our uh, estate planters and hay racks. They're re looking really nice. I mean, these planters have really filled in now I planted the Diamond Mountain Euphorbia in here to see if it could keep up with the vigor of both the Vertigo Penicetum and the Supertunia Bubblegum. So far, it doesn't look like it's doing it. Um, you can see it a little bit in here, but not much. Um, so we'll see, you know, right now we just started getting some consistent warm days. It's been such an erratic spring. I mean, we've had so much rain. In fact, if you look at really closely at the foliage of some of our annuals, they look kind of yellow even because they've had so much water and I am not used to that. I'm not used to dealing with weather like that in the spring and early summer. We even had a huge hailstorm that you guys, I mean, I've, I've talked about it in lots of other videos. We had a huge hailstorm that came through and damaged a bunch of stuff. So I'm really happy with the progress of all the annuals based on all of those different kind of things that happen. Um, but the hayrex are starting to fill in, starting to spill over the edge. You can see the uh, Supertunia silverberry, Supertunia bubblegum. Now they are kind of encroaching on my sweet potato vine. Um, and I was kind of hoping that by putting a sweet potato vine in here that that would keep up with these. So we'll see. Again, with the consistent heat, I think we can expect everything to start to boom. Um, so I think what I want to do first is run down uh, the fence line here and show you the true drop containers, give you a little update on those. Oh, before we go there, I just want to show you what this flower bed's starting to look like from this side of the fence. I'm really liking how the layers are looking. I popped a bunch of meteor shower verbena in here. There's Queen of Sweden roses, uh, a June snow dogwood, uh, oak leaf hydrangeas. Anyway, there's just a bunch of pretty things in here and I'm starting to really love the way it looks. Um, of course, I've got more space in there to fill, but it's just an evolving process. Also, the poppies are just blooming and delphiniums. These are called green wheel or green twist. I can't remember, but they're really beautiful. And I've done a really, really crummy job of keeping things staked. I thought I would remember coming out and staking everything up and I didn't and we got wind and anyway, they're still looking pretty. So as we go down the fence line, just note that the first one is Aaron and then it's mine and then Aaron's mine, Aaron's mine. We did every other. Um, everything is doing, I think, fairly well. Um, this is Aaron's shade container, which probably could use some deadheading, Aaron. <laughs> at this point. Um, but the diamond frost is keeping up. The next one is mine and I have a brother, Stefan Clematis, in this one that's just blooming away right now. Looking so pretty and I love the stuff below. Now um, I do think, so we had some hail damage on some of our plants, but I'm also seeing maybe some earwig damage. See that? I need to come out here with some of that bug and slug bait. I have some of that from Bonite and it works really well, but I haven't been really diligent about putting it out. 
Um, and this is the time of year when it starts to get hot where you start seeing those types of things appear in your garden. But it's an easy fix, thankfully. I'm loving this one that Erin planted up. Look at these. These uh, are marguerite daisies. Uh, and they are, there's three of them in here. Uh, he did this in kind of blocks. There's three yellow caliber, uh, super bells, caliber coa, three sweet potato vine, and then three daisies. And it's just like, it's totally filling the container now. This one's mine, looking fairly decent. The uh, Goldilocks Creeping Jenny is looking maybe a little bit sun weary, which boy, I'm gonna have to keep my eye on that. It's gonna get hotter here very soon. One of Aaron's without the centerpiece, and this is gorgeous. It's gorgeous, Aaron. Looks great. I love the color blend. I love the um, Angelonia in here. The Cascade Blue, I think is what it's called, but it's just really pleasing to me. This one's mine. You can see the creek, three cannas in here, and everything is just like, oh, it's just growing like crazy. Um, this is the White Out Superbina. I've got Lemon Slice Super Bells. Diamond Frost Euphorbia is in there that may have been an unnecessary addition. We'll see, but it's a pretty color. I like everything's really bright. Oh, shade. <laughs> um, this one's Aaron, Super Junior Bordeaux, Prince Tuts. Everything's looking like it's just spilling over. Tons of buds on this one, like tons. And then one of mine, another one with a topiary with the lemon, uh, lemon appeal thumbergia, which is actually, I should be out here kind of training it, but this will be interesting because I think I'm gonna have some of like the branching, the tendrils coming down and acting as a spiller, which I never really thought about in this container design. And then it should take off here really soon with the heat and fill this topiary. But I think once that yellow accent is in here, that's gonna be so pretty. Um, but everything else is looking great. The super bells, the magenta, the lantana. A pretty color blend i think and aaron's with the uh nymphophia in here and i do love the color blend i was admiring this one earlier today i was out checking them for water um, and it's just a really pleasing blend because they are warm colors but it's not in your face it's just like a pleasing soft warmth if that makes sense <laughs> This one is one of mine, and I have to say it's one of my favorites, not just because it's mine, but because the colors are so pretty. Um, Lemoncello, the Bermuda Beach Supertunia. We've got Play in the Blue Salvia, which as you know, is one of my favorite salvias ever. And then I think this is White Knight Alyssum, but everything is just like, like really growing well. And then this one's surprising to me. Look at how much Aaron's Lemon Coral has grown. So there's one canna in the center, which the poor thing, look, look, this is what the hail did. Look at that. It just like sliced foliage up like crazy, but there's new leaves that look really good. Um, and then the lemon coral has just filled in like crazy to the point where I think we may even have to start kind of like cutting it away from the center to give the canna room to breathe. That's Benjamin's favorite pot. And this, I think, is my, my number one favorite just because of the colors. Um, I could come out here and deadhead. That would make it look better. But this is the Lively Lavender Dahlia. So gorgeous. There are three of them in here, and they're really filling in the center wonderfully. A large lilac blue Superbina, Supertunia. I think this is Mulberry Charm, and then Royal Velvet. Just a really pleasing blend, and I'm such a purple and pink fan, you guys know. Another one of my faves right here, this is one of Aaron's without the centerpiece. Um, and I hope you guys can see the detail in this harsh kind of sunshine, uh, but just beautiful. It looks sparkly right now. And then this is one of mine. I'm growing a weed in here. There we go. Three Toucan Scarlet Cannas, which look at this, look at, look at, there's a bloom forming. And this one, I, you know, I kind of like it, even though there's red in it. I know you guys will be shocked to hear that, but I feel like, I feel like all the colors go, I feel like it actually shows up down here because this is the very last one, you know, there's clearly nothing else. Um, and so that having that red in there really kind of draws you down. I have to admit it. Okay, so I think we'll just take off this direction into the formal garden. Um, I do want to talk about this area really quickly because I'm so, 
thrilled with how this clematis done. This is a bush type clematis. It's called Stand By Me. Um, and this, these were planted last spring. And I think there's about one, two, three, four, five, I think there's seven of them total planted in here, um, starting over there. And they kind of come all the way over to this fence post. Um, and I thought that I was gonna maybe have to plant a few more in there to make them really thick, but they have just gone for it. Um, they do benefit from being planted close to one another so they can kind of use each other for support. But this is its second bloom already this summer, and there's more buds forming all over, but they have the most darling little flowers. They're just so unusual and beautiful, the color, I just love it. Now they are underplanted with orange smoothie daylilies, which the texture of the foliage is kind of perfect. It's a little bit lighter green, it cut, like kind of cascades out. And then there is a ginger wine nine bark back in there, which is doing great. And it's actually, I think it's either right, it is in bloom right now. Um, so as soon as that puts on a little bit more growth and kind of fills in this corner right here, we'll have a beautiful layered effect. And I just wanted to talk about like sometimes when you plant your things together, um, the growth rates won't match each other. And sometimes your front layers will fill in before your back layer. Um, and that just happens. You just need to be patient. And sometimes it's hard not to want to get in there and plant something else or something bigger. But eventually this area, once that nine bark fills in, is just going to be, it's going to be glorious. These are new pots from uh, Henry Studio. These are called the Giant Classico Palm Pots. These are like huge. They weigh 300 and some odd pounds a piece without anything in them, which I tend to like because that means they have really thick walls. So they held up to winter temperatures really, really well. Um, and so I tried, I put these, this uh, combination in a video earlier in a vlog. Um, so if you want to check that out, you can go like watch through some of our past vlogs in the recent, recent past anyway. Um, and I talked a little bit more about these flowers because they are brand new for next year that I'm just trialing. And you will notice we do have some arches in the openings of this garden. Now they're not set yet. I mean, I can pick them up right now. We haven't decided exact placement. We also need to mess with these and get them all spaced properly. Um, but these came in from the UK. I couldn't find big enough arches for these entryways. I got them through Garden Artisans um, and we had to wait a while for them to be shipped over, but they are uh, 12 feet wide and 10 feet tall in the end. And I want to grow and train some trees to them. So I have some tree arches back here. So we will do a video when we get ready to set these and just kind of show you what we're doing and kind of the process. Um, back here, these at last roses are doing great. Um, they are in bloom. You can see, like, look at this color. I did not have time to come back here and deadhead them. Although they don't, deadheading is not necessary for them to keep blooming, but it does make them look nicer. And I just didn't have time, but oh, the color is gorgeous. And the rest of the flowers back here, I'm just about ready to come cut back a lot of my uh, blooming perennials, the ones that bloom kind of early summer. We cut them back now, like this is Tucrium. It blooms kind of a beautiful light, like, I don't know, medium blue, and it looks gorgeous with the peach roses. But I'm gonna come in and whip all of these down to the ground and they will flush back and create nice little mounds that won't be kind of flopped over from all the storms we've had. Uh, and then they should bloom again. Okay. I do want to point out these yuccas. Now I planted these variegated yuccas in here last year. I think it was maybe midsummer, and they're putting on blooms, which I think is really sweet. So both of them, both of these urns have yuccas with blooms in them. And I hardly ever water these, which is the best part. Oh, so right over here, I just wanted to point out, and I don't really want to get close in on them, but these are all my snapdragon seedlings that I started, my snapdragons that I started inside this winter. Um, and they're doing like well, they look okay, but I haven't been out here to fertilize them or anything yet. So I just wanted to touch on that, that I have planted all of them. Like there's 140 snapdragons out here in this flower bed. Um, and now that my attention can kind of turn to more maintenance kind of things rather than like planting so much, I'll be taking care of these a little bit better. And I did leave the alliums up in the boxwood formations just so even though they're done and they're mostly out of color, I think they're maybe like a couple with a little bit of purple coloring left on them down there. I just wanted to give you guys the idea of the effect over here. Uh, I feel like this was a, it was 
a win. Even though the alliums didn't this year grow as tall as I thought they were going to, we may trim our boxwood hedges just a little bit shorter and I'm hoping, and I don't know if this is what alliums do, but I'm hoping as they maybe mature, they might get a little bit taller. Um, so we'll have to see. Either way, it was gorgeous and I'm glad that I did it. All 100 alliums came up. I planted 50 in each cutout and I have space if I want to, if I want to order maybe some more alliums that are a taller variety, I could kind of like intersperse some taller ones, which might be a fun idea to do anyway. Um, but it turned out perfect because I have Walker's Low Nepeta in here. Um, so you can see this blooming um, perennial in here. I don't much care for the foliage of alliums. So to have a perennial like this that just like grows and intermingles around the base of the alliums is amazing. And we had like a dual color show. We had the allium, deep purple allium, and then the beautiful blue nepeta right below. Um, we just put a video up about our transformation and whole big hole that we created in the fountain not long ago. But I'm enjoying the flowers in there. They've done really well. Look at this bloom stalk. This one's massive. That's gonna be so pretty. I've got firelight hydrangeas planted right here, which we put in a video. I can't remember how long it's been at this point, um, but they all have a ton of buds on them, just all over the place. And this right here, this is Cheddar. So this is our new kitty that just showed up at our house um, and who we are adopting. So he's gonna go to the vet clinic in the, probably the next week or so. Um, but he is just a sweet, sweet kitty kitty. Like he, he's a lover. He loves Benjamin. Benjamin loves him and Russell and Cheddar get along. So anyway, you'll probably be seeing him in more videos as well. But I do love this little corner. Planted this tricolor beach earlier this spring. And then I underplanted it. There are black irises in here, which are kind of cool. And then we've got the lime thyme, not limelight, coleus here with some vanilla marigolds. I thought that was kind of a sweet blend. Here's the other arch and the fun containers. I did this in the same video as the other containers on the other end and these have a really fun unique blend of plants I think. Oh, oh. They're friends. So the area right behind the chicken coop um, it's looking really pretty. We have the wild berry, um, these are wild rose hookahs with the supertunia mulberry charm planted below. Um, these are the white wands of Veronica, which did get a little beaten from the storm, so they are kind of flat a little bit, but they're all putting on their blooms and they're gonna look gorgeous anyway. I have added quite a number of things. I popped um, some things into some holes in flower beds. So there is a emperor one Japanese maple that I tucked in right back in there just for some nice red color. Um, lime, lime thyme coleus back in there as well, a nice drift of it, as well as some radiculous coleus, which is right behind the foxgloves. And these are called, um, boy, something plum, uh, foxglove, darn, I can't remember. I thought I would remember. I always think I'm going to remember all the plant names and I, there's just too many of them, but they are absolutely beautiful and the bumblebees love them. There's the chickens. We'll wait to go to the front of the chicken coop for just a little while. We'll stay in kind of the shadier areas because it's pretty sunny up there right now. Um, but there is the Decadence Pink Lemonade uh, Baptisia right here that already is done blooming. You can see it's spent bloom stalks here, but I really like the way this foliage looks throughout the season. It's a really delicate, soft foliage to me. Um, and then back in here, this will be fun. I planted some hibiscus that get the great big pink flowers on them. So there are three of them. And then an Arnold's Promise Witch Hazel, which blooms in the winter time. So it'll be fun to have some winter interest there. Oh, and Blue Suede Shoes Salvia, which is a new one coming out next year. So that'll be really fun. And we'll look at the rest of that here when the light's a little bit better. So we'll go this direction. So these containers are starting to fill in a little bit. I did plant quite a bit in here, but I've really enjoyed the way these look because it's not like any kind of really bright or eye-catching color. It's just a really soothing mix, I think, of colors. It's just something really beautiful to look at. I do want to go forward a little bit because you guys have to check out the smoke bush. Look at this, it is crazy. Like you can see more of the blooms than you can of the foliage. 
and I love that. I, I think people either have a love or a hate of the smoke bush, and I love them. I think they're beautiful to use in flower arrangements, and it's just a really unique texture in the garden. And the foliage, I mean, especially some of the varieties, there's one called Grace. I think it's called Grace, and it has a beautiful color foliage. And they're just, they're wonderful, hardy, hardy shrubs. Um, I do want to mention though, I've got a euphorbia right in there, and I don't know if you can see how the light is going through it, but it looks like it's just glowing. So beautiful. Um, Virginia creeper that I've actually let kind of dangle in here. Benjamin loves this kind of thing. Like when you're holding him, he loves to play in it like, like the weeping willows. Um, and I think it gives it kind of a magical feel. So I've just been kind of letting it do its thing back here. And I've just liked it so much more than any other year. So let's go this way and take a look back here because I really like how this flower bed is kind of shaping up. When you look at it like this way here, you can see a lot of different layers going on. So there's a type of penicetum right here. And I'm not sure what variety, this was here when we moved in and I absolutely love it. It stays very short, gets little plumes on the top. I planted a sunshine gold caryopteris right here. I thought it was a beyond midnight. I think beyond midnight. Um, but it is a sunshine gold and we've got hibiscus, the summerific evening, is it evening rose, Erin? Ah, uh, we planted those in a video last year. Very, oh, yeah, summerific berry, awesome. Um, we planted those in a video last year and I can't wait to see them bloom. I'm glad they're all up and doing well. Popped a few yellow echinacea in here. These are a type of drumstick allium. Um, and I planted two groupings of those. So there's a hundred alliums in here, um, just of that small variety. So they're about ready to open. Um, this is Cat's Pajamas Nepeta. So a very low growing Nepeta that doesn't like run rampant in your garden like some varieties will want to do. Um, there are some Daisy May daisies, which I actually transplanted from the, in front of Benjamin's kids garden area. I had those planted a couple years ago and I popped them in here alongside some Mary Rose, roses right here and there are five of those so i had this one right here was planted last year i just deadheaded these like two days ago um, and then i planted four more so there's like a drift of five of them that end right here big bunch of delphiniums that are about ready to open lupins um, this drip drift of blue fescue which aaron doesn't like and i love it <laughs> this was also here so the blue, blue fescue is pretty much every, the only thing that was here when we moved in and the pen, penicetum. Um, and I just think it's really pretty. I think it's a pretty structure and it makes it look a little bit more natural back here. And then we did pop the Grand Acanthus birdbath from Henry Studio into this area. I thought it was kind of perfect for this birdbath. Um, right here, we've got a lamppost. Erin gave me two of these lampposts for Christmas one year. One of my favorite gifts ever. I love them. Um, and so this one we have lit. I don't know. The other one is still, we haven't figured out how to light the other one, uh, but it's a really sweet spot at night. Uh, I'm watching Cheddar and Russell playing, fighting. I don't know. It, anyway, um, the Nofofia, this is Flashpoint. So it's the yellow and white colored Nofofia. And I just really like the texture in here. It gives like some nice dramatic kind of height there. This is an Anna's Magic Ball Arborvita. And whenever I take a picture from this angle, I get a lot of people asking what this is. And this one grows 18 by 18. So this is about full size for this little shrub. Um, so it's a great accent to tuck in. I've got another one just down the way a little bit. I planted some white profusion salvia in here. Um, there is a, I think this is a pink microchip um, budlia. There is a quick fire hydrangea, which is gonna get way too big for this spot. In fact, I planted that hydrangea and it stayed little for so long that I just started like popping stuff in around it thinking, well, maybe this hydrangea just isn't gonna grow very big. Um, and I think it's gonna finally start taking off this year. This right here, you guys, is one of the blue chiffon Rosa Sharon standards that we had in the estate planters in Versailles last year. So the other one, I, I skipped it. It's in the back formal garden, looks just like this. They both came back beautifully. There's buds all over them. So that was a success. Using them in the containers up front, it went better than I thought it would. Um, they were very, they were perfect. They maintained their shape. They bloomed like crazy all summer long. And then they made the transplant and didn't shock neither of them. So I'm really happy about that. Um, if we go down this way, we've just got a jumble of perennials. There are some distant drums roses, poet's wife roses. I did add in an avatar blue spruce back in here because I need 
that weight. This right here is just a little bit flopped and it's about ready as soon as these blooms are done, we'll come in and cut these all back, um, as well as the red valerian, um, which that's another one we get sprinklers are on. We forgot to turn them off. We get a lot of questions whenever I um, post a picture from this angle as well as to what this is. And in pictures, it always tends to look red and it's not. It's very pink. Red, it's called red valerian though. Um, so anyway, I'm, I've got some annuals popped in here, some pentas and some purple fountain grass. So this area is going to very much transform uh, even in the next couple of weeks as we start cutting back perennials and kind of creating some order in this space. Um, Benjamin's garden is coming along really well. So I'm gonna just step over. These are the fruit punch, whoop, sweetie pie fruit punch dianthus that I just stepped on, awesome. Between the storms and me, I'm gonna have like all kinds of flat plants. These are in their prime right now. They just look really pretty as a nice short border. Um, this area I have not developed yet because we are creating Benjamin's space right here. I plan on doing a little pathway that leads right up to his little bamboo teepee here, which I did add a piece of artificial turf, which I never thought I would put in my garden, but it's perfect because it allows water to penetrate and go, you know, it doesn't like, I don't know, it doesn't get damaged. Like if I put something different, like an actual rug in here, which I was thinking of doing. And one of you guys, I think, um, Bobby, I think you, um, or Robin, one of you guys suggested that I put artificial turf in here. So thank you for that suggestion because it's a good one and it works well. Benjamin likes to go in here. He loves to grab the croquet balls and throw them out the backside of the teepee so that Aaron or I can go fetch for him and put them back in the teepee and then he'll come back and throw them again. Um, the Thumbergia are just now starting to put on some more growth so it won't be long. I'm hoping by like a tour, maybe a month from now, that we can show you a lot of progress in the growth department. Um, these are where the green stock gardens are. So we have the yellow Lady Godiva yellow calendula, calendulas and the strawberries. And then there's the other green stock over there with the supertunias, which have started to put on some growth and I can't wait for those to fill in. But I have added some other things over here, some woo la la hostas. You guys look, look at that. And this is actually mild. There were some leaves that were, I cut off actually a bunch of leaves from right underneath here that were even worse than this. I was so sad when that hail storm came through. We were actually ready to film a garden tour that week. And I was so kind of distraught about all the damage that I just couldn't. Like I had to just work. I had to just come out here and try to make some sense of what was going on and try to fix some things. But you know what, plants are resilient um, and they're already starting to rebound and look a whole lot better. So I don't know why I get so worried about stuff like that in the garden because you know, between like branches falling out and hailstorms, I mean, there's always beautiful things to come in and take their place. Um, so we have planted some beautiful Japanese maples in this area in particular. This one is a blood good right here. Um, so this should do really well. It gets a little bit of evening sun, but it's very mild. It's like at the very last part of the day, we're in the late evening right now and a tiny bit of morning sun. So it should do really, really wonderfully. Okay, so now I wanna like squeeze through here and talk about this little area. This is a spot that I moved a bunch of hostas that got really damaged. Um, so I probably dug up, I mean, there's a whole bunch of little ones that I just cut back all the way and dug them up and brought them all over here. Um, just as kind of like a hosta sick bay, but I honestly think it's gonna be wonderful. Once they're all like next year, once I cut them all back and they come back fresh next year, they're gonna be so glorious in here. I planted a Marie's double file viburnum. I've wanted one of those for a long time because my parents have one kind of in their entryway and they get the beautiful discs of flowers that are kind of flat. They look like saucers on the plant and I've just always wanted one because I loved theirs. Um, I planted some red hot coleus in here, wicked hot coleus, which will be new next year. So it's gonna be beautiful here as a touch of red. And then I decided just to fill up the rest of this space with cut, like kind of cutting flowers because I had autumn frost hostas. And once we got rid of the hawthorn, which was right here, it, there was so much more sun in this area that I don't think those autumn frosts would actually survive. So I dug those up and tucked those back in to the shade. And then I planted some salpa glosses. I've never planted it before and I don't even know if that's how you pronounce it, but they look kind of like little Willy Wonka flowers. All different colors and there's a big drift back in here. Um, apparently they do lull in the middle of summer when it's really hot, but they will bulk up and, and they are really good cut flowers apparently. And then a bunch of gom gomfrina. So this beautiful white kind of clovery looking blooms. Um, and I've got a lot of pink gomfrina up front, which we'll look at really quick. 
um, when, once we get up there. Uh, so I think this will be a really pretty area. So as we come through this way, you can see that it's starting to really fill in with shade plants. And I'm gonna kind of go through things just a little bit quicker than I did in the first part of the tour because we are gonna lose light. Um, and we are planning on doing a series of shorter tour videos where we take specific areas and really talk through all the plants and show you a little bit closer detail. Um, so anyway, I'm super happy with how this came out. There is a video where we planted the hookahs and hostas right there um, that you can search for. That was this spring that we did that. As we come to the front of the gazebo, I'm really happy about this area. It is 100% different than maybe the last time you saw it. There's only one plant in here that was here before. Everything else is brand new. Um, and this is a project that I tackled maybe about a month ago and I've been so happy with it. And this is one of the areas I wanna spend quite a bit of time on because there's a lot going on in here. There's a lot of um, layering that's going to be happening as the plants grow. So we'll take this and really do a more in-depth, thorough video. Um, right underneath Hebe, over here, we just got through putting up a video of this whole transformation where I talked about all the plants and kind of the weird light requirements that I'm working with right here. But I am so far so thrilled with this spot. Everything's looking great. All the plants have, I mean, they've been in for maybe um, 10 days or 14 days or something like that. Um, and they're, they've really done well so far. There's been no shock or anything like that. Um, this spot right here, I do plan on expanding my flower beds, making them a little bit deeper on this side. We probably won't cut out anything in the center because this is a nice big open area for Benjamin to play in. But I think I can sacrifice a few feet on this edge and kind of create a deeper border. Um, but there's some beautiful things in bloom. The uh, honeysuckle wall right here, this is a freestanding trellis with honeysuckle on it and the fragrance over here is just amazing, especially coupled with the mock orange that's in full bloom right next to it. Um, you gotta love those strong fragrant, fragrant, yeah, plants. Um, and then if we go straight across this way, this flower bed is looking really good despite the hail. Um, this hosta was very damaged and I cut a lot of leaves out of it as I did with those, but they're still looking really great. And I really, I don't know, I'm just so happy with how everything has rebounded. There's a lot of beautiful yellow columbine in this area. It's just a really soothing spot. And if we go across this way, this is one of my favorite views of, one of my favorite views of the whole garden. When you take a look across these flower beds during this time of day, when the light's coming through, all the different plants in there and all the different colors and textures. I don't know, it pro you probably can't see it in video like you can in real life, um, but to me, it's just one of the most beautiful things. I just love it. I did plant a bunch of annuals in here to fill in this space. There's some impatiens and coleus. I planted a big drift of diamond-like hostas that I can't wait to see fill in. Plus, you've got the iceberg roses in full bloom over there, which you can't beat that. That looks amazing. So let's go around here toward the kitchen bed. We've got some perennials that are getting close to blooming. This is also one of my favorite views. I love to look out the kitchen window and see this. I have been working on the textures in this bed quite a lot since we moved in. When we came here, it was beautiful, but it was full of a lot of the tritoscantia or spiderwort, which to me, I like it, but in mass, it can look a little bit messy to me because the it just has a little bit of a wild look to me and I needed a bit more structure. So I'm still working on it. I still haven't got it quite dialed in um, the way I want it, but I did add a big drift of lamb's ear last year and the Wizard of Oz uh, Veronica um, in here and that's about ready to bloom. So it's getting there. This spot right here though, I have to talk about this one. Midnight Masquerade Penstemon. If you do not have this in your garden, you should have this in your garden. It's one of my favorite things. It's so long blooming and the foliage is beautiful. The stems are beautiful and it's super winter hardy. Um, so anyway, it's just looking particularly nice right now. And you can see my dad's truck in the background. My parents came over to watch Benjamin so we could do this tour. They're inside playing right now, but I love these containers. I used a bronze leaf pink bloom begonia. There are three of them in this pot coupled with three diamond frost euphorbias and three dichondra silver falls. And this might be one of my favorite pot combinations this summer so far. I just, it's very pleasing to me and it's super low maintenance because none of these like a very, very much water. So I don't have to worry about running drip to them because I hardly ever have to touch them. That's great. 
Um, here we've got hedges of lavender, and I don't know uh, in terms of detail how much you'll be able to see with the lighting the way it is now, um, but these were planted, I think was it last year, Erin? I think it was, like last early summer, and they've grown so much. And I didn't know exactly how what was going to happen because this side gets slightly less sun than this side, but they're really, really similar in size. Incredible hydrangeas, there's a hedge here, and they're just starting to come into bloom. Like they're just starting to open, lots of buds on there. So I'm super happy about that. I underplanted those with some annuals and I just kind of filled up these areas. There are some perennials, some annuals, some roses. You know, when you put your garden on tour, it kind of um, makes you want to fill all the empty spaces, whether or not it's with something permanent or not, just to make it look really pretty. Um, and so I did that in some spaces, but there are still a lot of holes. Um, Agapanthus, this is the first time I've ever grown it. It's actually not a, a perennial in my area. And I'm hoping we have another mild winter because so far I've enjoyed this plant and I have a ton of buds on them. Um, and these, this one's not even fully open yet, but it makes me really excited. I did get a couple of new urns right here. I ordered these from Unique Stone. This is the English floral urn. Um, I don't even have these connected to drip yet. I have the drip run through them. Um, I was just trying to get them planted and done, but I just have been loving them right up here. I think they're beautiful. They're like perfect size and beautiful design. So on the west side, I've done a little bit of planting. We just got through planting some instant karma elderberries. There are four of them worked in along the west side here. I planted a few um, roses in here, another boxwood to kind of match the other side. But I did want to run through the vegetable garden because we really haven't done, I don't think we've done any vegetable garden videos this year. We were just, we've been so busy with other things. Um, but everything's doing really well. I have um, a super fantastic tomato. In fact, you know, I think we'll do a complete video, um, like a, a video all its own of everything that I've got in my bed. So we'll just take a quick walk through to see what's in here. All of the beds are filled. They're all doing really well. Um, there's a couple of things in here I've never grown before, like parsnips. Um, which are apparently really hard to get to germinate, and I didn't really have any problem with it. So far, Russell loves to lay in this bed, um, though, so I've had to put some repellent in, and I don't see any, any sign of him being in here recently, so that's good. A um, couple new different types of lettuce I've been growing and different types of peas, but everything's looking really pretty, I think. I love to see this vegetable garden like active and full of produce. Okay, so I think we'll go over and see the front of the chicken coop as well as how the begonias are doing over here. And then we'll run up to the front of the house. These are the Surefire Rose begonias, you guys. And they are a begonia that can handle both sun or shade, but I was a little skeptical because our sun is so intense. Of course, it hasn't been 100 yet. We've been in the low 90s, um, but so far they're doing wonderfully. I mean, the ones that are in more shade, the ones that get more sun, they all look about the same. So, so far, I'm really impressed and the color has been really, really stellar. Um, even with all the hail that these got as well, they've, I mean, I, they really didn't skip a beat. They just kept on growing. So the chicken coop area looks kind of bad with lighting. So I think we're gonna go up to the front and then we'll come back to this spot. You know, I think that we're not gonna have enough time to do uh, the rest of the garden. This may be where we have to end it because I think we're just about ready to lose light. I think we should break up garden tours and like, what looks good in the morning and what looks good in the evening because we try to we try to get it to where everything looks good and you can see all the detail. Um, lighting plays such a huge role in how we film things. But anyway, we thought we would come up here and at least show you what's going on because I did plant the area where the AC unit was and kind of wanted to talk through that just a little bit. Um, you guys already know what's in the cutouts up front, um, the Gomfrina and the Super Tuna Morning Glory Charm and Lemon Coral Sedum. And I brought over some of that interest into this area with the Gomfrina, um, which of course, as it grows and fills in, it'll look like more of a hedge, more of a thick kind of interest right here. I started back here with a Weeping Norway Spruce. Um, and the reason I put this here, I wanted something evergreen that was gonna look interesting still in the winter. Um, and I wanted, I thought that I would enjoy something green up here in the winter time. Although when I got it in here, I started to look at the structure of the hollyhocks and it looks very similar. And I didn't think I was gonna keep the hollyhocks up here, but now they're looking kind of pretty. And I, so this whole area might evolve. So I will warn you, I might be digging stuff up, moving it somewhere else, um, because I may decide to put a great big concrete container right here and do something in it. Um, 
so you know who knows that's kind of how the rest of my garden is too like i just kind of work on it and tweak it until i really like how it looks and i i think it looks good now um, but i'm just going to have to live with it for a little while and see honestly how this limelight hydrangea does because i transplanted this where the ac unit went on the side of the house we had to dig this one up so i brought it over here to kind of draw some of that limelight hydrangea uh, interest over here to make it look somewhat balanced um, but this area gets intense sun for a much longer than the other side does. So we'll just have to see how it, it grows. If it fills in and does great, then it's going to be just wonderful. But it might be a, a case where I have to replace it with something else. But in any case, I do have some beautiful plants up here, which we've already done spotlight videos on all of these, kind of talking about their stats and um, kind of showing you the plants in more detail. But these are ginger wine nine barks. There are two of them in here. I have three king tuts I just kind of tucked in the back there for some really tall interest once I cut the hollyhocks down. Um, and then there are six Atlast roses up here. Um, and Atlast are one of my favorites because it's one of my favorite colors in the garden. I just came through and deadheaded these not long ago. Um, but I thought that that would be a beautiful, colorful hedge up here. And I'll probably always leave this space up front open for some sort of beautiful annual. Okay guys, so I actually have a lot more to show you in this garden. There are so many pretty things right now, um, but I think we'll just have to come back and talk about those things in other videos. And I honestly think that it's, it'll be better. I can take a little bit more time showing you the spots, talking through my thought process and give each one of the plants the attention that I think that they deserve. But anyway, I, kinda, I hope that this video gives you kind of an overview of how things are doing in the garden. I know we missed lots of spots, um, but at least it's something for now. Um, and we will be bringing you more very, very soon. So thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.